Hello, hello, hello. How's the fragrance life? How's the fragrance world going? Hope that y'all are doing all right out there. How you smelling? What are you smelling like? How you doing out there? Hope that everything's all right. Is uh, is the brightness too high? I feel like the brightness might be a little bit too much. Let's turn that down. Does that look better? Not really sure. Anyways, let me know how things are looking. Uh, th today, I thought we'd just joke, you know, uh, just take it easy, talk about how often we should buy a fragrance, not too much drama or anything like that, take it easy. I think that, um, I think it's good fragrance community-wise to take it back, you know, sit back, take it easy, smell amazing, of course, and, um, you know, today, I, I pulled out Mochino Uomo. I don't know if y'all remember that fragrance. It used to be a hidden gem that people talked about, a great cheapie. And um, I thought it might be discontinued, so I wore it, and uh, I looked up on the internet, and I don't know, I don't think it's still being produced, but uh, Moshino Uomo is, uh, I know I'm saying it poorly, <laughs> but it's still available. You can still get it with a discount code from like FragranceNet for like 25 odd dollars, not sponsored. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's... It's still a good fragrance, and I mean, I don't know, it brought a little bit of happiness uh, to me to know that there's still a few good fragrances out there for a fair price. Y'all know that right now it's kind of hard to get fragrance, sometimes hard to get fragrances in general, and the prices of things because things are less available. Prices are higher than they should be. A lot of these uh, gray market um, or discounter type companies uh, nearly doubled the price on some of these, a lot of these fragrances. Uh, once they start getting hard to get and I guess you're at their mercy you know you're not going to get a better price much of anywhere else unless you find a friend or somebody who's willing to part with it <laughs> uh, so anyways uh, that's been on my mind trying to help people smell good for less I want to do more cheapy lists I want to produce more fragrance videos that are more for on the affordable fragrances but they simply just um there's not a lot of $20 fragrances out there right now. There's a few. There's a few here and there, but there's not a lot. And uh, um, I know the topic is how often to buy fragrances. It's just I'm kind of getting into the topic of fragrances are getting more expensive. But um, I don't know. I don't know how it's... The age of $20 fragrances is almost seems to be almost over. I think y'all have seen that and y'all felt that. And, you know, getting a decent fragrance, even on the gray market, hey, there's, you're still going to find amazing deals, closeouts, liquidations of things at Ross or TJ Maxx if you're lucky, if, if you like to go there. But by golly. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's, uh, you're not going to find those deals too much, uh, you know, too often anymore. So anyways, how's uh, my, my volume? And uh, is, am I coming out loud and clear? How's my video looking? I've seen some people pop in and out. Is my connection all right? I, um, I know I'm not the biggest YouTuber in the world, but by golly, I think that, uh, you know, having some friendship and Having a good chat, I don't know why you'd click on this video and quickly uh, click away. Uh, I'm producing or giving you a better experience, in my humble opinion, than most out there. So, anyways. the uh, I haven't been buying too many fragrances. I have some on my buy list. Um, I'll tell y'all which ones are on my buy list. Um, and I guess we're kind of building up. Building up to the topic of how often to buy a fragrance. So, uh, one is a uh, Scotch Pete from the House of Strangers. I've talked about that. I really want to get remarkable people from the House of Etat Libre de Orange. And there's, I want to, there's, there's a fragrance out there called Anti Blues. I've actually never smelled it, but I'm tempted to blind buy it. I don't know if I'm going to love it or not, but I have this feeling about it. Like it's going to be a cold, dark, chocolate fragrance uh but not too warm not too gooey not too sweet like a bitter chocolate that's also cold not for everybody might almost come off as more gothic or something like that but uh i'm tempted to blind buy it so if i buy anything in the future those are probably going to be my blind buy purchases how's everybody doing i've been seeing some people pop in please say hello hey Chantel. good to see you and uh, loving your channel. I need to catch up a little bit. Hey there, Chantal. Uh, how are you doing? And what do you smell like? And what's your scent of the day? Uh, 
For me, it's a Moschino. A Moschino? I, I don't know how to say it. A Womo. Uh, it's it's a fragrance that came out before Toy, before Toy Boy. Not everybody seems to be familiar with it, but it was a great hidden gem. And it's still a cheapie that's still available today. It might be one that might dry up in the near future. Uh, Roadster uh, by Cartier is just about completely dried up. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there's people on eBay asking $150, maybe even more. And there's still people expecting out there to get it for 70 odd dollars. And um, unless you find a friend or you're lucky to find one of the last few bottles out there, you're not going to get Cartier's Roadster for 50, 60, even 70 dollars hardly anymore. Uh, Judd the Stud, Armani Code Profumo. Good to see you. And uh, that's a good fragrance, you know, performs, um, you know, attractive. If you're into compliments, it still works. So, yeah, Armani Car Code Profumo, one of the, you know, one of the great, you know, designer fragrances really that's been made in a in, well, that, I don't know, stood the test of time. I don't even know what the word to say uh, to describe it. But uh, Chantel says, I'm great, thanks. I'm wearing Lancome Oud Am Ambrose. Is that Ambrosi? Ambrosi? I have not tried that one, but I know Lancome does have a high end. Their, their niche range, niche range uh, like um, Oud Bouquet, they have quite a few fragrances, actually. I've seen some pictures of some of theirs. I think I saw a patchouli, if I remember right. And uh, I am very tempted, very tempted uh, to get a bunch of samples of those. But um, I wonder if they're more feminine or unisex. I'm curious, but uh, I have no doubt that they're great. I know some people in the past have had some bad experiences with customer service from Lancome. But um, I don't know. They seem to be... I don't know, going strong and people, lots of people trust them. Lots of people buy the Dior exclusives and the Chanel, and the Chanel exclusives. That's for sure. They still do. Uh, so I don't know. Would you recommend it? Or have you explored the range, Chantel? Have you explored that whole range? Funny enough, I got most of the samples and I've tried most of the Armani Privés, uh, their niche collection, but not the, not the Lawn Combs. Uh, that's definitely something I need to do. So, with this topic, how often to buy fragrances? Oh, Judd the Stud made a comment. We'll get to that in a second. Judd the Stud is in the house. Good to see us. Says uh, Lancome Hypnos has uh, been my favorite since 2008. Is that your signature scent? Do you have 10 bottles of Hypnos? <laughs> That's a good fragrance. I actually intended to buy that. Funny, qu quick, funny story. I intended to buy that fragrance, a used bottle on eBay years ago when I was in college and um, somehow I didn't pay attention and the picture did, you know, there's the female version. It looks purple or purple, lightly purple. But anyways, this picture, I don't know how they did the lighting made it look. I don't think they used somebody else's picture because when I got the fragrance, the juice looked purple. And uh, when I smelled it, it was definitely for women. I th and uh, mate, it smelled feminine to me. And I looked it up, and I didn't even know there was a female version. So that ended up as a very nice gift. My mom actually really loved it. It's a great fragrance, but uh, I still never got that Hypnos. Maybe I should have got it. Never got that Hypnos pour homme. Chantel says, yes, I love the Maison Lancome fragrances. They're very good. Oud Bouquet is a, a, my absolute favorite. Yeah, Oud Bouquet, still a very strong contender, very popular. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to start talking about buy the fireplace and some of those, and they're great. I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying that uh, Oud Bouquet and some of these, it's like, I, I don't think they're going anywhere. Uh, I don't know. With buy the fireplace, I don't know if it'll be as popular in a year or two, but Oud Bouquet, I think it will. I think it will. Chantel says, definitely worth checking out the range. I will. I'll definitely try to get my nose on those long comb fragrances and, um, I'm curious to see what I think if they're too expensive for what they are, uh, but they do look the fa the bottles look fancy. I like the I definitely like the presentation. That's for certain. So with me buying fragrances, I um you know when I first got into fragrances, I think a lot of us have this fragrance journey that uh, we want to smell everything and have new experiences, and everything is so fresh and fun and new. So we tend to buy a lot more, maybe do a lot more blind buys than we should, maybe spend more money than we should. And, uh, you know, some of us keep a lot of things. And, you know, for me, I, I tend to sell a lot of things. So um, over time, I've eventually gotten to the point where 
I I have so many fragrances I want to buy, and I've smelled so many fragrances that I've gotten to the point where, you know, the things I want I want to buy re- kind of outnumber the things I want to try, and uh, so I kind of like save my money and just take it easy and just try to relax, and uh, if I save enough money when I feel like it, I might eventually get those fragrances because again. Even though I've limited my di- collection down, liquidated a lot, I've got my collection down to like fifty odd fragrances. I um, really, really, I, I mean, I'm satisfied. I have, mo- I feel like I still have more than enough with like fifty odd fragrances. More than enough fragrances. Every occasion, every emotion I might want to feel or express. Every look, every style. I don't have tons of outfits. I'm not super, super duper fashionable, uh, but I have. A fragrance for just about everything and uh i'm satisfied but there's you know there's always going to be probably a new fragrance i mean the fragrance story never ends there's always new fragrances being made and there's so much to catch up on y'all know uh you can keep yourself entertained with new fragrances for the rest of your life if you want to uh let's see definitely work on checking out the range i will chantal great advice judd judd the stud says i'm debating on buying a couple of duas tonight on the sale either that or a blind buy of La Ligue, or, or um, Inter, Interpol. <laughs> I want to say, that's not Interpol, Intim uh, Porel. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. It's, uh, I'm, I've been tempted to buy a Dua before. I um, I don't know, I just haven't done it, but I t- I've told you all about that Italian Pomme, how good that is. It's a, that's a really, imp- probably the best fragrance I've it's not really much of a clone. It's one of their hybrid blending uh, fragrances. And by golly, they, they made a good one. Uh, it, it's more for gourmand lovers if you like something sweet. But Chantel says, I definitely need to reduce my collection. Uh, there's quite a few that I don't give enough love to. Yeah, that's the thing for me. Um, I, I When I wear a fragrance, I want to be like excited about the fragrance. And there's lots of good fragrances out there, and I'm not putting down on them. But, you know, if you have a really big collection, if you have hundreds, if you're a collector, that's a whole different story. You get enjoyment out of the collecting. But if you're actually w- w- uh, buy fragrances to wear them, why not wear the only fragrances that you think are 10 out of 10 masterpieces that you are crazy about. Um, why have fragrances that are kind of good or sort of good, or, or you know, you know, or just collect dust and you, you know, you never really wear them. So again, I'm not trying. I never. I'm not I'm not trying to discourage collecting or collectors, but you know, maybe you have a couple fragrances in your collection that you think are eight out of tens, or nine out of tens. You could possibly sell a couple of those and then afford or put that money towards a 10 out of 10 if you wanted to. So uh, let's see here. Um, I def, uh, So yeah, Chantel, that's how, that's how I've been. And I'm trying to declutter and where I'm living is like under construction and there's like so much going on. And um, I'd like to possibly move or possibly travel. I mean, I still want to travel. I'm not financially there, but I'd like to travel the world and at least go somewhere. And um, I just really need to down, uh, downsize. I mean, I don't have. I st- I want tools. I mean, I'm a I'm a a, bit, a little bit of a tradesman, a little bit of a you know a, a working with your hands type guy. I don't know if you can tell in my hand that's callus uh, from work, and I still have some paint that's paint that uh, hasn't gotten out of my hands. So. I, um, you got to have tools. If you want to build a house, you got to have tools and things like that. So, or or do anything. So, uh, look that one up, Ben. Uh, let's see. I will. I don't remember that one off the top of my head. I might've seen it before, but let me see. In tour, in tour Perel. That was it. I think I misspelled it. Let's see here. In Tim Porel. It's a Tim. Okay. Sorry about this distraction, guys. I'll get back to the check here. Uh, comment <laughs> section here in a second. Uh, is it In Tim Porel by Fa- Faber Leak? Or who is it made by? Anyways, this one says it was released in 2014. Violet Freesia Lily. Looks like a floral with a fruity floral. Uh, that's creamy and looks pretty well put together. I never smelled it, but 
And um, let's see here. I totally agree. I'm just wanting to keep fragrances. I absolutely love. Yeah, that's my mindset. But um, and that kind of makes me these days. Oh, it's by Lalique. Okay. I have seen that fragrance. I heard of it. I don't think I've bought it, but <laughs> uh, let me look it up here. So, yeah, I, I mean, why have fragrances around if they're collecting dust and they're going bad? Unless you're a serious collector. And if that fulfills you and makes you happy. I think I've looked up this one. Isn't this the one that's like boozy and it has some darkness to it? See, bergamot, tobacco, yeah, coffee. I like coffee. A, a violet can be good, depending. Vanilla, tolu balsam adds a really warm, comforting, soothing, like woody, resinous quality. Um, almost like an incense. Uh, and patchouli can be really nice. I have looked up this one before. I, I would like to get my nose on it. Uh, I've been tempted to buy it. It's uh, sometimes not available. I've tried to get it from Fragrance by CA before, and it's always sold out. Uh, supposedly there's a few bottles uh there's one on right let me see fragrance net and they have it for 144 and you can get a little bit cheaper if you look up a better code than the 25 Let's see here yeah for you can get for cheaper than 140 i don't know maybe 130 so i bet that's good have you smelled it have you gotten yourself a sample uh lead zep good to see you in the house i just got a bottle of corn after listening to the hype so weak disappointed and that's probably one lead that's probably been heavily um uh reformulated so lots it really depends on which vintage fragrance it is if it's still being produced today it's probably been probably really watered down like i've heard people say that brute used to be smell a lot better and I've, I've talked to people and they've told me that they thought that brute used to be a lot stronger i haven't smelled vintage brute but i believe them you know now it's you know i don't know i've tried it <laughs> i tried that one time and i didn't think it was awesome but judd the stud says i it's like 129 yeah yeah with that with the 35 percent off discount yeah the 129 that's nice that's uh, that's not bad at all. You'll you'll have to let me know how that fragrance works for you. How good that fragrance is. I'm tempted by that too. So you got me tempted. I've I kind of I don't know. I don't think I put that out of my mind, but that's one that I've had in the back of my head. So, anyways, how often do you all buy fragrances? Do you all make a goal to save up your money, like one purchase a month, or do you save and buy a bundle, or do you just buy whenever you want, whenever the deal comes up, whenever the sale comes up, or Somebody in a fragrance group puts something up for a great price. Do you snap it? Um, I'm really curious about that. So for me, I feel like I've I feel like I've almost stepped away from the fragrance world a little bit because I, <laughs> I mean, I've been keeping up, but I haven't bought too much in like a month. Uh, but I, you know, lots of fragrances to review, lots of fragrances to go through. So, but um, I don't know. I feel it in my bones. Maybe maybe when Scent Explorer comes up. Maybe I'll buy myself something nice. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if there's a discount code I like. I don't know. So let's um, – interesting topic. I hope that I've it, – it's been fairly entertaining. We can keep going on. But, of course, we will eventually get to the new fragrances of the week, if there's anything in particular. <laughs> uh, Judd says, I just buy whatever whenever, but definitely less frequent – than in previous years. Yeah, I've, I've really been slowing down. My collection is fulfilled. I've tried a lot. I've bought a lot. I've, I've, I've explored a lot. And uh, I have I know what I like. I know what the notes and the, and the, the accords. And of course, there's creativity. And of course, you might get uh, surprised. We I, I don't know everything. We don't know everything. But there is... Um, you got to get to the point that you... I mean, you really understand yourself and the, maybe even the perfumers. I still don't know everything about perfumers, but sometimes I know what perfumers kind of what they might do, what, what their tendencies are, maybe like what kind of accords they like to play with. And starting to get a little bit of a grasp of that. But that's deep down the rabbit hole fragrance. That's 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 deep. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for a bargain, Chantal says. Uh 
do you look online? Do you uh, do you mess with fragrance groups or where do you get your deals? I'm curious. And the Ross and the TJ Maxx thing would be fun. I probably wouldn't talk. I would talk about that a little bit more uh, regularly. But again, I live in a smaller city. And our Ross or TJ Maxx is abysmal. <laughs> uh, in the words of Devil May Cry, it's a video game. I'm just joking around. But it's uh, it's abysmal. And you hardly find anything halfway decent. And then sometimes if I find something halfway decent, I can get it cheaper online from like Fragrance Net or Fragrance by CA or somewhere like that. So anyways, let's see here. Let's see if there's anything new. Um, are y'all excited about that? But um, I do think it's I do think it's good to I don't know I don't know it's good to have fun if you have the money I guess of course do whatever the heck you want but I think it's my I I, I don't even know how to word this I think it's good to uh, I don't know slow down a little bit maybe test more. Go to samples. I've encouraged y'all to go to boutiques. What do y'all think about that? Going to a boutique, smelling everything, uh, because you can get excited, and maybe, and again, it's good to go in there with just an attitude of just enjoying, you know, just enjoying and liking everything. But if you were to go to a boutique, and if you were to go there and uh, smell hundreds, maybe two hundred fragrances and niche fragrances, let's say you don't have, you have little experience, or maybe you're still learning, or I mean, I don't know everything. There's still new uh, blendings and accords and notes and perfumers. And uh, you can go in there and then you could really find what you really, really like instead of trying things here and there and buying things here and there. And uh, I think that would be a better way to go about it. I, and again, I guess it depends on how much money you have because a lot of people buy into hype. Again, nothing against Bakar Rouge 540, but again, that really surprised me. Bakar Rouge 540 to me was one of the biggest... I mean, again, not that it was a bad fragrance, but I, I and I thought it was good, but Bakar Rouge 540, like everybody was just blind buying it, and it's and it's expensive. It's not a cheap fragrance, and especially when it first came out, and I was surprised that so many people would just blind buy something based off, uh, you know, other what other fragrance reviewer a fragrance reviewer would say, and. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that happens more often than I think in the fragrance world or the fragrance community, because I've never watched a fragrance. I've I've watched a fragrance review that to help me make my decision if I want to possibly get that buy a fragrance that I was already interested in. I've never watched a fragrance review and just been convinced that I've never heard of it and just been convinced that I have to immediately buy it. I, I don't think that's ever happened. I don't think I've ever done that. Um, I'd be curious to see what you, if y'all have, so I'm just being authentic and true to myself and just ex sharing my experience and, uh, I'm losing people. I don't know. I guess, I don't know if this is that entertaining to some of y'all out there. I think it's pretty entertaining. Is my lighting bad? Do I need more lighting? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I smelled that newer version of candies today at TJ Maxx. It was awful and only $12. Um, I, somebody sent me a decant. I think it was smelling good or, uh, smelling great. Uh, what was it? Best brands perfumery. I think is, I think his name is channel name is he's blown up. He's way bigger than I am, but, and he's cool, but, um, I don't know. He seen, he sent me a sample out of the kindness of his heart, which was generous. I didn't ask for it or expect it. And I think he wanted me to think it was great or something. I don't know. Some people out there really do seem to like candies and, um, Supposedly this was a sample or a, it was like five mils or four, three. I don't even know. Probably four or five maybe. And uh, I don't know. Some people out there might really like it. I if, if that was vintage candies, I didn't even care for the vintage. But some people, it was a, for its time, it was a very mass appealing, modern, you know, kind of fragrance, I guess, for its time. And uh, it is fun to, I think it was fun to smell. Because there, it, it you know it was another one of those fragrances that was kind of transitional, you know, from the '90s or early 2000s to the fragrances we have today. And I think it's fascinating to see that change that we had. Because a lot of people, I, I, I think that a lot of y'all watching my channel right now are very experienced in fragrances, and I think y'all know a lot. Y'all probably know more than I do. 
but there's a lot of people outside of fragrance and maybe they don't know how dramatically fragrance was changing, you know, you know, up to that point, you know, seventies and eighties, it was all changing. It was wild. It was creative. And then in the nineties and the two thousands, we kind of settled uh, into this, you know, th some of these popular DNAs that we have now, like with ambergris or whether it be Tonko or Amberwood, we get a lot of cedar in our fragrances, a lot of modern cedar, I guess, a molecule like cedar. Uh, we get a lot of modern uh, sandalwoods uh, and patchouli gets snuck up in a lot of fragrances. And, uh, you know, we used to have the, you know, again, the biggest fragrance styles used to be like fougeres. And then we did have some fragrances like Fahrenheit, which like really aggressive, uh, you know, violets or sometimes florals and things. But designer fragrance wise, it a lot of the times it was a fougere or maybe it was a chipra for a long time. So something like that. Uh, no, Casey, not really even in the top 20 agreed. Uh, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, Mont Blanc, the best designer house. I don't know. Um I like Bulgari. I don't like that they've upped their prices recently on their fragrances, but uh, their aquatic range is really strong. And then they have like Man in Black and some other releases. I think Bulgari for me might be my favorite designer fragrance house. I'm not sure. Mugler, um, again, don't know what's going to happen with the company in the future, but like Pure Tonka and for me, pure even Pure Malt was great, but Pure Havan and uh, really strong releases. And then they've had some other great hits and they're really strong. So I'm not sure. Uh, Jed says, okay, they have a good one though. Yes. And Azaro Ohm to, yeah, Azaro. Yeah. A lot, if it's any of those fragrances that were vintage, yeah, Azaro Pour Ohm. Yes. And um, it's going to be watered down. It's not going to be the same. And that was a really interesting fragrance to learn about the Azaro Pour Ohm. That was a rabbit hole. There's like a there's like a German version, a French, and I think there's even an Italian version. I forget. I think is it the Italian that's the original and the strongest. And can, some people prefer the um, prefer the German. I think it is, but I think I think the uh, the Italian is considered the best and generally the most expensive one. So um, yeah, that was a fun rabbit hole to go down, but. Anyways, <laughs> uh, any more thoughts on any fragrances or cheapies? Are you ready to dive into the fragrances? Are you all ready? The, the new fragrances uh, the, of the week? Any new releases that are going to catch our eye, be fascinating and fun? So let me double check the comments real quick. Okay, no, no, no. Let's still add your comment if you had a thought. Please share. So let's jump into the fragrances, though. We have some... New fragrances from Montclair. Don't haven't tried them. They look like a bottle of booze. I don't know if they're good quality in particular. Uh, we got Christian Cavagna. Never tried those. Could be good. East Spirit, um, a newer brand. Looks like a Zara-like brand. And we do have some Zaras. We have some new floral uh, Zara fragrances. Zara Orchid, Ruby Berries, and Gardenia. And now, me saying them new... Or that that they are new. I know that Zara repat rebottles or puts the same fragrance in uh, different bottles and renames them all the time. I don't really know if these are different formulations or different smells. So please don't hold try to hold that against me. Um, let's let me catch up with the comments. Okay, no new comments that I see. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got Rurania perfume. They got a new one coming out called Herb and Wood. This is um. Again, a celebrity like a celebrity fragrance house. Uh, the packaging looks a little bit odd. It looks like a, I don't know, like a waffle cone. <laughs> and the stand it comes with a little stand, but supposedly maybe in the box, maybe it'll be a top up box like an amouage or a fancier presentation. You know where it has a base or a bottom, but it looks like it's made out of paper. So um, I'm not sure how I'd feel about that, but. The name's kind of funny. Urban Wood is this a fragrance made? For, it is a fragrance made uh, more or uh, sold, marketed towards men. Of course, where where whatever the heck you want, but it says it's a leather fragrance uh, for men. Oh, it might be rebellious. It's got some of the smoke weed. <laughs> it's got some of the funny stuff. Uh, it's got mint leather. 
uh, Pally Sander Rosewood uh, and a little supposedly some oud and some incense. So maybe they're trying to play off the spice in wood. I find it very funny that some of these uh, fragrance companies and brands, um, I don't know if that works for them with the algorithm, like search wise on you on YouTube or uh, maybe Google. Maybe they're focusing more on Google, but Urban Wood is not a very good name. There's got to be some reason why they did that. It's just not a very convincing name. Uh, and I don't know how many men are going to go for it. Maybe they see the success of Spice and Wood by something like Creed. And maybe they think they can play that clone-ish game and get away with it. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, our Moth ha does have some original creations, but they are famous for doing their own interpretations of things. And they've kind of gotten away with it, but... I don't know if Rania is going to be able to do what Armoff has done. Hate him or love him. I mean, Armoff has had some success at least. So, um, Angel shared. There's a new version. Uh, I'll call. I don't know. Is it a new? Is it a repackaging? Um, it's the one that said French Montana. Let's look. Let's look if the notes are any different. I am curious if this French Montana is just a repackaging. Or a different smell. Um, let me see if I can't find anything about that. So there's Angel Share. Uh, see. And supposedly this version is different. Let's see. Uh, cognac, cinnamon, tonka bean. Oh. Sorry about that. If, if y'all are messing with Fragantica, y'all know that they um, <laughs> it doesn't pull you exactly to where you were when you backspace. Okay, so it does look different. There's more oak and hazelnut, and it has vanilla, sandalwood, and praline. Let me double check with the... Was there praline in the original Angel Share? There was. Okay. So the notes really don't look very different. I don't know why why there's this this exists on Fragrantica. I don't know if this is just a different repackaging. I don't think the booziness has changed. I mean, the booze hasn't changed in the fragrance. So what's the purpose of this? Do y'all know? And somebody already commented. Uh, Emmy Yaz, um, some. Somebody on Fragrantica said it smells the same. So, Let's see here. What is the best of Ventus cologne? Um, I like Napoleon cologne from the house of Zoha. Um, and I've reviewed and talked about most of the, the most, the biggest clones, the most popular clones of Aventus. I've talked about most of them and reviewed most of them. So, Montbach Explorer is nice. It's affordable, it's available. If you want something easy going and carefree, might be worth the one, but the performance wasn't great and the dry down just kind of fell apart just a little bit. But again, Napoleon Cologne by Zoha. And then, uh, I mean, you, of course, you know about Club de Nuit Intense. The, I, the, I thought the Eau de Parfum was pretty good. But uh, I want to try some more fragrances, maybe that have some of that DNA. I thought that uh, I think it was Imperium uh, by Electimus also smelled a little bit like that. And if I had to say anything that, you know, the, something that's trying to get very close, I'd go with the Zoha, the Napoleon Cologne. But if I had to go with anything that maybe is inspired by, might be the Imperium. And the Imperium is a good price for what it is. Same Angel Share, just collab packaging. That's what I was thinking. It's dumb. Yeah, Stephanie. I'm not going to get excited about a, um, you know, a different, I don't know, different packaging. I'm not, <laughs> that's not my kind of thing. Uh, does that, uh, must somebody must buy it. French Montana. I don't, is that a new celebrity? I've, I, it's not, Ma, it's not Madonna. If they put Madonna on there, I'm sure, I'm sure somebody would want to buy it, but more, but French Montana, is this, for all I know, this is a new rapper. I don't know. Did y'all see? I'm, I'm not very hip 
<laughs> or or up to date on some things. Like again, my mute taste in music, very different from a lot of people. But uh, I think she's a rapper, like Sweetie or Sweetie something. And there was that new McDonald's commercial, and she was on there, like the Sweetie meal that w- that happened like a month ago or something. And uh, I didn't even know who this person was. Uh, do you, did y'all know? I don't know. Is she still relevant? I don't. I, I try to. I, I I keep up with fragrances the best I can. There's. Uh, I'm just joking around. But anyway, Sense of Wood is getting really popular. I think that they are spreading and becoming uh, more available in more boutiques. Uh, do try Scent of Wood if you can. Give them a try at a boutique if you have the chance. Don't don't pass them up. Uh, I smelled a couple of the earlier ones, and they they have some really nice natural woody notes, and they do play up the the, the booziness in their fragrances. So. If you like authentic, uh, you know, fresh woody smells and, and booziness, they have some nice combinations. The new ones coming out is orange and chestnut and cypress and oak. Uh, so I, I do look forward to hopefully trying those. I do like orange. So orange and chestnut might be something that I would like. Um, Comptor Sud Pasafique has a new fragrance called Vanille Iconique. Um, some of their fragrances are kind of juvenile smelling but a lot of some of them are fun and, and sometimes are a good value some of them are hit and miss but Comptor Sud Pacifique is another brand that I don't know where they're really sold or where they're particularly available but uh, they seem to be fairly popular and they seem to sell out in some places and this is a new vanilla one and it says regular vanilla bourbon vanilla it says Tahitian vanilla absolute it says it has cedarwood sandalwood and benzoin. wine uh, so Sounds nice. I don't know how high quality it will be. Again, a lot of these fragrances are in the $80 range. So let me catch up with the comments. Um, has it been confirmed? Jo- what? I I don't know, Casey. I haven't heard anything about that. I don't know if that's true or not. More power to him if he likes it. I, I simply don't know. Uh, I'm stuck in the 90s music scene. Yeah, I, I, again, I like all kinds of different music. I explore. I don't stick with one band. I pick and choose all kinds of different music. And uh, I like everything from the big, the biggest genres in general that I like. And these are not bands. These are types of music. Uh, you know, Russian hard bass, Celtic folk. And uh, I don't know. There's all kinds. Of, I don't know. What was, uh, sim- what was it? Vocal trance. And, those are probably my favorite genres in general, but I pick and choose everything. And I like experimental music. I, I like some stuff that's like pop jazz. That can be really fun. Like Kimbra. I love Kimbra. I think she's a fantastic musical artist. And uh, there's some people out there that are doing great things, but I, I don't stick to any one band. Kimbra really impressed me and Nightwish. Nightwish is great, but I uh, don't stick to any band for sure. And the same way with uh, fragrance. I don't stick to any fragrance house. I pick and choose what I like. And that's what I, I don't know, kind of encourage other people to do. Some people like to have brand loyalty or stick with a brand. And some brands have amazing track records like Guerlain. Uh, Amazing track records for sure. But do I want to uh, only have a Guerlain collection? Hey, if you want to do that, more power to you. But I don't really do that. And the 90s scene, yeah. 90s has good music, so let's talk, uh, uh, we'll get let's get back to fragrance. Sorry about that diversion. Uh, Casey says, he- "Oh, I already read that. I don't know. I don't know if uh, what he wears uh, is this news. Let me know. You could send me a link if you want to." Uh, Sig Weaver uh, says, "Dude, your hair looks great. Well, thank you. I did get it trimmed up pretty short. I I kind of do like to have it short." For the most part, and I don't know, it just works. I don't know if it works for me. Some people have told me it looks it looks good for my style and who I am. So I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to look. I like Jason Bourne. I know I need to get more fit, but maybe I'm supposed to look like Jason Bourne <laughs> with that sharp, short, uh, you know, kind of I don't know haircut. Anyways, let's uh, get back to the fragrance. We're kicking it though. We're just taking it easy. We're just relaxing, having some fun, talking about fragrance and stuff. So uh, let's see. I don't know anything about a brand called Le Parfum de Rosine, 
don't know anything about it. Bottle looks kind of tacky. <laughs> There's another new house coming out called Adam Powell. It's very interesting that every single one of their bottles has like a different style. I don't know if they're going to, it's just a new fragrance house that's experimental. So maybe they'll stick with a certain, uh, like a label, like a text style, uh, depending on which fragrance sells the best. But I, I don't think I remember any brand doing that. You know, every single one of their labels is like a completely different font. And uh, it's kind of jarring. It's like, I uh, don't know if that was a smart decision. Another new fragrance house coming out is called Mahogany. They look like, uh, you know, just, I don't know, something Bath & Body Works like fragrances or something you would uh, just freshen up with. Body sprays, not really sure. Um, I'm wasting my money on uh, Blinn buying cheapies. <laughs> you're buying the cheapies. Hey, nothing's wrong with a good cheapie. There's some good ones out there. But if you're paying extra money, again, nothing's wrong with the vintage fragrances. But if you're paying $300 for a fragrance that used to be in the sales bin for 30 bucks. I don't know. I don't think that's good. And a lot of people do that in the FragCom, and then they're proud that they have something. And more power to them. There's some fragrances that are highly coveted, like Midnight in Paris. And I don't even want to mention some of them because more people get interested, and so the price will probably go up, and more people might buy it. I, I don't want that to happen. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, nothing's wrong with regular cheapies, but it's hard to, again, the age of the $20 fragrance is kind of over. Uh, and that's a sad thing to see and say, and I don't know if we're ever going to get back to the day where, again, you might get lucky in a clearance item at your Ross or TJ Maxx. You might find yourself a $20 fragrance, but as far as going to fragrance net fragrance by CA going online, uh, uh, the, the age of the $20 fragrance is almost over. It's uh, it's almost completely gone. So, uh, let's see. Cigar Weaver says, I can't believe I actually found a gardenia and jasmine fragrance that I love. Which, which one was that? Or did you already tell me? Uh, oh, that was the Sir Galahan, uh, by Isby. I'm not too familiar with that. It has a masculine, um, origins, but has gardenia. Gar gardenia can be good. Um, I really got surprised by 10 a.m. flirt by Kieran NYC. And, uh, I, th I, yeah, I think it is a what considered a white floral. It, um, Gardenia did surprise me. It can be used right and well. And tuberose. Like, a lot of ladies are surprised that some guys are liking tuberose if it's blended in really well. Uh, Bulgari Man in Black has tuberose in it, but it's very well done and um, excellent fragrance. Richard uh, says, this is a conversation I can't partake in. Uh, in the last six months, I've bought at least five bottles every week. Well, Richard, uh, tell us what which fragrances were worth your money or did you like all of them? Uh, no more power to you. If you have the budget, if you have the space in your house, if that makes you happy and you're not racking up a credit card bill that uh, is uh, dangerous, uh, more power to you. But um, I've kind of switched to, I don't know, taking it slow. And I do like fragrance. Maybe some people think that I, I and I'm still passionate about fragrance. But I've really kind of slowed down and um, focused more on just like exploring and going through the motions and maybe not spending as much. But that's kind of like where I'm at, you know, <laughs> and I don't know. Brands might not might not want me to say that or think about that or suggest that. Again, I joke about this. I haven't I haven't done the review for y'all yet, but I will. Lalik wants you to buy their premium version of Ancre Noir, the Crystal Noir version, and they want you to pay $750 for it. <laughs> so uh, it's like, I'm not all about that. Does it smell great? Yeah, we'll talk. About, I'll, I'll do my review. That's going to be a fun one. But uh, I, uh, I'm i not going to go for that. So anyways, I don't see too many other new fragrance releases. Let me uh, scroll down and do a little bit more searching. There's a new Roma, uh, Roma, uh, Roma Womo Green Swing. Very fantastical name by Laura 
be all go uh be all go day. <laughs> i don't know how to say that anyways interesting um come day garçons very interesting fragrance has as as, as y'all know sometimes um experimental in their fragrance creations and sometimes in their art you i don't remember come day garçons doing anything particularly strange with art but they've done a collaboration with I don't, uh, somebody called Cause, which is a Japanese brand, supposedly an artist, I think. And it, it has a picture of somebody, it looks like, uh, I don't know if this is a Halloween themed fragrance. You can go look this up on Fragrantica as well. It looks like a, like a cartoon character, like Mickey Mouse with the white gloves and the X on his hands. And it looks like he's uh, just about completely drowned in uh, like a pool of blood. That's uh, that's quite daring and quite strange. Uh, the fragrance notes are turmeric leaves, root oil, neroli oil, clean accord. So it's going to be like dirty and gritty and clean at the same time. Orange Blossom Absolute, Kashmir, uh, Sonif, uh, Sonon, Sy, Sin, Faunide, uh, Benzoin, and Benzoin. So it's uh, again, these aren't particularly expensive. Uh, they come to Garcons, but again, I don't really know where they're particularly available. This is supposedly going to be launched exclusively, uh, at least for now, at uh, Dover Street Parfums Market in Paris, October 1st. So, supposedly, it's already available, it's been available for like a week. So, um interesting you never know what you're gonna see in the frag com you never know what you're gonna say or see uh so uh, casey says talk cartier talk cartier to me uh cartier is a great house certainly worth exploring they they make a lot of great fragrances and uh i don't know i don't know what else to say about them it's uh i love their uh pasha noir it's very light very inoffensive not particularly challenging or particularly rich but it's kind of aquatic kind of mass appealing kind of spicy kind of classy easy to wear and um i never thought i'd like it that much but i i went to a blind buy on a limited edition and uh i'm enjoying the darn thing so and cartier makes a lot of good fragrances there's the parfum uh, pasha parfum it has a fougere element to it that a lot of people are going gaga for uh so i don't know there's there's a lot of good Cartiers. I would like to see them come and uh, make a designer line like Guerlain did and become really successful. I wish that Lalique would do that. And some people would say that the Lalique white and the and the that they made a new flanker of the white because the white was their best seller. Uh, it was called it's the new one's called White and Black. That's the flanker. And uh, I would like to see La Ligue. I'd like to see a lot of the, these really nice houses like that have great uh, history and track record, come out with designer fragrance lines and really crush the competition because like Profumum, uh, not Profumum, uh, Perf <laughs> I can't even say their names right. It's um, Valentino with their new prof uh, you know, perfumes and Roma, perfumed Roma. Like some of these brands are trying to do some of these things and I, I don't, I don't, I'm not crazy about it. I'm not in love with it. And, uh, there's a bunch of opportunity, but a lot of brands are playing it safe. And, um, like with Hermes, Hermes H24, pretty safe. They played it pretty darn safe with that fragrance. And, uh, I'm not saying brands need to take big risks or do things that are experimental, but they need to show some personality. You can't give us like a kind of like a dumbed down version of one of your previously popular fragrances and kind of simplify it and make it more mass appealing and then put it in a new bottle for the designer market if that's all you're going to do i don't know maybe not do it at all <laughs> but again sometimes that might work uh, that might actually bring some brand success but us we're the, fra the the fragrance connoisseurs the frag heads we're not going to be too pleased <laughs> Uh, Gemiel, good to see you. Uh, Richard says, Ben, you already know I'm into niche exclusively. I've really uh, been delving into a lot of indie houses like Sarah Baker, uh, Jeroboam, uh, Olympic Orchids, and I've been buying a few from Zoologist and Guerlain. Uh, so you're, you've, you're deep into the good stuff. 
Uh, that's that's definitely you know. And Jeroboam, happy that you have. That's uh, Jeroboam is highly underrated. And if you like stuff like Zeno, and uh, you like some of those complex fragrances, I, I'd even dare to say if you like Fahrenheit Parfum, um, you know, and you like those kinds of fragrances, guys, you probably want to explore Jeroboam. Some of them are experimental, but uh, there's some good stuff. And I don't Olympic orchids. Uh, you know, I need to dive more into them. Zoologist is nice. I don't know. Zoologist, I have some, I have some back and forth. I have some, you know, mixed feelings about zoologist, but they're good. And uh, I know that they're pretty popular in the niche uh, fragrance world. Uh, fragrance world. I still need to get Guerlain uh, Tonka Imperial in the collection. That's definitely one on the buy list. Anyways, great fragrances there, Richard. Uh, Zach says, Bennett says, hey, B hey man, uh, what is um, the better fragrance? Uh, Hugo Boss, the scent, Pure Accord, or the private? Um, that's tough. I don't know. I I need to explore the Pure Accord more. I need to try that one more and, and formulate a, a, an opinion and give you all a review. That's another one. But uh, from what I hear, I haven't heard. Maybe it's just because it's a flanker. But I never I haven't heard too much about the Pure Accord. So um, I know that a lot of people love the is it the Private Accord? Is it the ED, I think it's the EDT version. Um, I think I think that's the how you say it because there's so many flankers. There's you know the Private Accord, and then there. Let me even look this up. I need to. I should uh, make sure I'm saying this correctly. So just to ch check myself see here we're talking about the private accord ones so so there was the scent the you know the scent private accord which i think was an edt which was nice and then there's there's been a couple flankers no 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 it's the they changed the name. I'm trying to, y'all. If y'all, when I was reviewing these, as I would have known this off the top of my head, but now, okay. So the the scent, because there's the scent. There's the regular uh, boss line that's the, based off their original DNA, and then there's the private the private accord line, which is based on the maninka fruit. It's it's a it's a completely different DNA. It's it's got this rich, dry fruitiness and tobacco. And the scent Pure Accord, um, I, I'm i looking at it now. I don't know if I've even smelled this one. This wasn't available everywhere. Maybe I need to get it. Uh, this one has ginger, citrus. It does have the maninka fruit, but it doesn't have the tobacco. It has leather. Uh, looks fun. I like the tobacco, though. I have to be honest. I, I, li I like the tobacco. So the Private Accord EDT still isn't the cheapest, but if you want a bigger bottle, I, I know a lot of people love the opening and they find it addictive, the original. If you want to be different, the Boss, the Scent uh, Parfum might be worth trying. So that one has kind of like an overlap. It does have some of the Maninka fruit. And that's what was confusing me there for a second. It's like... You know, they had these two lines and they kind of overlap, you know, the names and then they anyways. Great question, though. I think I can see why that might be confusing. I I would try to get sample them, get, you know, at your local mall, especially if you have access in a big city to a boutique. You're probably going to be able to find the private accord and uh, you're probably going to be able to find some of the other Hugo bosses to compare them to. And um Figure out which one you like the, the smell of. The Pure Accord, I don't know where if that's available everywhere, though. That's the tough thing. Richard says, I've gotten my hands on a few of the discontinued bottles, like Absolute, Pour, uh, Le Soir, from Maison Francis Courage on uh, Tobacco Oud. Uh, yeah, those. That's uh, that was a bold one, Tobacco Oud by Tom Ford. The original formulation of Black Afghano. Has that one been reformulated? I'm sad to hear that. That one used to be a beast. Uh, Hindu grass, that one was always one that had really spotty availability. 
I always was tempted to get it. That was a nice one. I, I, you know, I don't think I don't know if I'd seek it out for the price, but it's a good one. The Hindu grass. That's a unique patchouli. Uh, how it's used. So it does have patchouli. It surprised me. Richard says Oriento Gozo Ligno Insulo. Oh yes, Jer. But those are some great ones from Jeroboam. Uh, Zach Bennett says, "Yeah, I love tobacco. Thanks, Green Pill Neo. Good to see you in the house." What's going on, people? Good to see you join in, everybody. Dastardly's in the house, too. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy spooky vibes to the people, um, you know, getting ready for Halloween. I saw some people, they celebrate Halloween like all month long. Some of you people are horror fragrance heads, and you might be watching a, like a Halloween movie every weekend or every day. I don't know. Some of, some of y'all are big into the Halloween scene. Um Halloween's kind of fun. I, I I would like to have be around more people. I I'm, you know I feel really comfortable with, and I'd like to do more fall festival stuff. But the world's kind of crazy right now, you know, being social and all that. But um, you know, I'd like to go, love to go to like a farm where people are, have like apple cider and stuff for sale, and and animals and you know all that kind of stuff. And there's a few places like that around, but I don't know if they're doing them this year. I, I'll have to look into that. Uh, there's a, like a, you know, a festival, not a festival, a, um, carnival that's usually not too far away. I don't even know if they're doing it this year, but anyways, um, I like to get a funnel cake if I can <laughs> every year. Funnel cakes are pretty darn good if you've never had one. Uh, so I found your channel looking for a review of a fragrance called Tequila Blue, which I bought from a store today for $185 without thinking about it. Oh goodness. Now, those aren't bad fragrances. I don't, I forget, I don't think I've reviewed or gotten my hands on the, the Tequila Blue, but I did get my hands on the Tequila Noir and the Tequila Oud. And they're not bad. They actually have a unique boozy note uh, that smells somewhat like agave, which again, agave is almost like a cactus, uh, you know, grown in like Mexico and places like that. That's used to make tequila. That's it's the it's the sweet, it's the sugar, it's the sap, and uh, they use that to make the booze. And um, it's uh, they're nice, but I don't think they're one hundred eighty five dollars nice. And they smell pretty decently, but they feel like the main. They just feel like the ones I smelled felt like a main accord, and maybe it was overtly blended. I don't know. It didn't feel like it really had a top, and it didn't feel like it had a base. It just felt like. I don't know. Linear is not the maybe linear is not the right word because it is like well composed in it, like the fright it smelled and it made sense, but it also really didn't develop at all. And uh, I don't know. Some people might like that. It's different. Uh, the tequila oud was the best by far that I've smelled from the house. Not because I'm just an oud head. It doesn't really have much of any real natural oud in it. It had more of like that deep, rich, um, like complex you know, dark, almost like dark floral aspect to it that I liked. It had like a warmth about it, maybe some spice. It's been a while. Um, I think I, I gave that one away to my mom. I don't, I don't remember. I don't even know if she's worn it, but it's good. Uh, the, the Oud version, but not for $185. No. Green Pill Neo says it doesn't smell bad, but it's no $200 for it. Yeah. It's not a two hundred dollar fragrance, that's for sure. Uh, Richard, I, I hear you on that. Where did you find that? I'm very uh, green pill. Uh, I know we got to jump to another subject or another comment, but I'm very curious where you even found that fragrance because I've asked people before, and I don't. Nobody's ever told me. It's like, where do you buy those fragrances? Where are they available? I don't know. I, I've never around here. If I asked for people, it's like, where's the tequila fragrances? They'd be like. Are you looking for the, you know, the booze shop or are you looking to get drunk? And I, I mean, they would have no, there's no, you know, I have no idea. They would have no idea. And so Richard says, has anyone seen the new movie called Malignant? I have not seen it. Is that a horror movie? I don't know. And um, I'm not sure what that movie's based off of. I haven't seen the trailer. I'm usually not too much into horror. Uh, so, uh, you know, I can deal with some movies and, I actually sometimes like Van Helsing like things like defeating magical evil stuff. But when you start getting into like bi weird biological stuff, sometimes that's kind of 
too far for me. Like, uh, you know, things like inside people and like taking over people and monsters and parasites like that. And, uh, that stuff's, you know, crazy. So I don't know if it's called malignant. I don't know if that's like a cancer or tumor monster or something. That's, that's, uh, that might be too much for me. I don't, uh, I don't know if I could do that, but if we're talking about like old scary Gothic fairy tales, like the stuff that was based, uh, you know, the Disney movies were based off of, I might be able to deal with some of that as far as horror movie goes, because I don't know, to me that makes sense. And sometimes there's a little bit of a, you know, a very dark and sometimes cryptic, like moral to the story, but sometimes it's a moral to the story. Sometimes like, you know, the old Grimm brothers, uh, old, they got some really ancient or old fairy tales put together. If it's just a hack and slash, I mean, I can see why that works for some people, but I usually don't go for that either. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a funny person regarding horror movies. Usually don't do it, do that too much. So let me catch up with the comments though. Let me see. Uh, Zled Zepp says, I th I'm thinking about blind buying, uh, La Terre. You mean Terre de Hermes or is it, is it Le, Le Terre? <laughs> Y'all might know of some stuff that I don't even know. Let's see me here. Let me see here. Um, you mean Terre de Hermes or is this a different fragrance? I'm not really sure if I should talk about Terre de Hermes. You got to, you got to clarify my friend. Let's see here. Uh, lead. Uh, Casey says the Zegna line seems to perform better for me than the mat, than the main line, um, of Zegna. So the Z Zegna. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that is. I, I haven't really tried or explored or compared those two differently. Maybe there's a certain accord or certain, uh, note that carries through and, um, you know, the Z Zegna line that makes the difference of performance. So I'm not sure. I don't know if it's ambergris in, or cedar or some kind of note. Uh, ice, more iso -E super. I don't know. Richard says, Ben, are you going to check out the 13th Gate Haunted House? Uh, I'm probably not. I used, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'd have to travel quite a ways to get there. And uh, I don't know. Is that a really, really big haunted uh, place or occasion? I don't know. Some people travel to go places like that. <laughs> I'm, 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 you know, I'm just working, trying to take care of, you know, things I have to here. I don't know. Maybe I should. I'd rather, I'd rather go to like a family, more of just like a laid back, you know, family, family friendly fall festival and, or, you know, eat, eat like a jalapeno corn dog uh, somewhere. I'm not into rodeos, but I'd probably rather go to a rodeo than a haunt, a big haunted, you know, place. I don't know. Anthony says, "Sent to the night is Mont Blanc legend intense." Are you are you into that, Richard? I don't know. That might be too scary for me. Casey said, "Casey Jones says it's funny because the Z Zegna line for uh for clothes is the lower level, um, but the fragrances. Oh, so you think they're better quality and they perform better, or is it just the performance, uh, Casey?" Um, I wore a Mont Blanc Legend Intense yesterday. I liked it. Yeah, that one's nice. That one's nice. It's not bad. The Legend version, for sure. And um, I remember it's people saying it didn't perform that well. And I, I remember that too. But it is actually pretty likable and pretty enjoyable. No. Anthony, uh, absolutely. Green Pill Neo says it's definitely linear. Uh, I found it at a fragrance shop in Nashville, Opry, Oh, you found it in a mall somewhere. So a little boutique. You found it in some little boutique somewhere. Interesting. Yeah, it's um, I've never seen that available anywhere before. So thank you for sharing with us. And uh, sorry that d did you smell it before? Did you just just blind buy it? Uh, did the boutique people at the boutique let you smell it? Interesting. Interesting for sure. Uh, Richard says, um, I definitely, uh, oh, the Bond movie. Uh, Casey says, what scent would you wear to uh, the rodeo? I think something earthy. Yeah, you probably, um, I probably would pull out Men of Blame by Carlin and I want to get my Scotch Pete. So something kind of rich and patchouli, something kind of warm, something kind of boozy. 
boozy spicy would work for sure and uh yeah earthy would could definitely work too patchouli yeah for sure Led Zepp says, I think about blind buying Hermes, Hermes Leterra EDT. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hermes with that H24. I'm kind of like on pause with Hermes. And they probably don't want to hear that from, from me. But And Hermes is a great house. And I'm not trying to discount them and uh, you know say they're bad just because of one you know, lukewarm so-so attempt at getting into the designer fragrance game. I mean, I'm still going to look forward to the things they make. Hermes is still a great fragrance house, but yeah, it's, um, I don't know. I'm probably going to, if I go to a boutique, I'll, you know, I'll smell them. But as far as getting samples, uh, I, I probably would, I'm still going to do that if I can. As far as blind buying goes, a Lalique, I'm not a Lalique, uh, uh, an Hermes. Uh, I don't know about that right now. Um, I did smell it. Smelled good. I was just anxious and excited and bought it impulsively, uh, though I'd never heard of it. Yeah, well, that sometimes happens. You live and learn, Neo, and uh, don't feel bad about it. It's a part of your experience, and if you still like the fragrance, if it still smells good to you, um, yeah, you, now that's a part of your experience, and don't beat yourself up about it. You know, I bought two or three fragrances from Mace, M Macy's and uh, you know, the mall before I knew about discounters or if I, before I ever hunted or looked for deals. And um, I still feel like that was a good experience. I don't feel like I got ripped off because I bought something at a mall. And most people probably buy stuff from their local mall or Macy's or whatever anyway. So um, yeah, don't feel too bad about it. Let it go and just enjoy that fragrance. And when it runs out, you know, do whatever you need to do. <laughs> Smash the bottle with a hammer after you've worn it and enjoyed it or do whatever you need to uh, and just have fun. Uh, Casey says, what scent do you think uh, Daniel Craig would wear uh, in the new Bond movie? Definitely Tom Ford. Well, Tom Ford would work. Um, I don't want to spoil the movie. I, I spoiled it for myself. I looked up uh, some stuff and some people, uh, you know, talked about some of the, something that went on and, um, um, you know, pop culture wise, this is a fragrance channel. I think I'm going to start something that makes social commentary, uh, because I have opinions and maybe they need to be said, but I don't want them to take away and be a focus and be a part of my fragrance channel. But, uh, I'm not, I've never truly been that much of a bond fan, but, uh, I don't know. I'll, I, I, I don't, if you haven't seen the movie yet, I'd like to I'd be interested to see what you think about that movie. That's for sure. Uh, Burberry. What are you saying there? Blueberry fit. Fifth. I don't, I'm not sure what you're saying, Anthony. I must not be cool enough or uh, must not be in the cool club because I don't know what you, what's going on, my friend. Uh, let's see green pill. Uh, Neo, uh, Neo says, thank you. For your kindness. So no problem, man. Have fun with the fragrance. That's what it's all about. And um, yeah, let me know, Anthony, what you were talking about there a second ago. Let's see if let them. And uh, as far as, uh, you know, Bond, I, I don't know. He could, depending on which Bond it is. I mean, Oud, um, you know, the Oud Intense, I think it is. There are, no, it's, no, it's just Oud Wood. That's what it is. Not Oud Intense. Well, there is a Oud Wood Intense fragrance. Either of those, who I think would really work with uh, Tom Ford. And uh, some people don't like it, but Oud Mineral, I think, also would work. Oud Mineral reminds me of rubber tires. So maybe that's just something I have in my head, thinking of James Bond and fancy cars and, you know, new tires and stuff like that. Anyways, let's catch up with the, uh, with the new fragrances. There's a new... I don't know if it's new, but there's people talking about Vetiver by Molinar. There's still a few fragrances out there. It's a, is this new? It is new. Rockstar by Carnar Barcelona. I do like the House of Carnar Barcelona. It comes out of Spain. But when did this come out? This looks like, yeah, this is definitely a summer fragrance. Was this released late? Was this intended for the... Uh, was this intended to be a summer release? It's called Rockstar. 
Um, I know their play on words, you know, being, you know, like music, but it's just an aquatic fragrance. There's nothing particularly rebellious or strange about it. It's not like they threw in a coffee note or a patchouli note or a tobacco note or a cord or anything like that. It's, um, it doesn't look rebellious. It looks like it's clean, a little bit of white floral to it, which is different. But nothing, nothing particularly special. It's got sea salt, which I do like to see the real salty vibe. I think I like to see that in aquatics. Some people don't like there to be salt in aquatic fragrance. To me, that really is a, a crucial part. Now, I don't have to have seaweed. Some people really hate seaweed, and I can understand that. And I don't. I'll, some seaweed is way too overdone, so I don't have to have the seaweed. But I think a little bit of you have to have a little bit of salt um, if you really want something to smell like the ocean. So let's see here if there's any other fragrances that we missed. And then I'll catch up with the comments. Um, there wasn't anything too, too exciting, um, too crazy. There's a new Tinzion Terenzi coming out called Christina. I saw the pictures of this one on Instagram, but I have not looked at the notes. Um, I do find interesting that they put the bottle, the, the, the year, right in the middle. I think that they should put it on the back or put it on the label. Uh, on the on the bottom, but being right there in front and center, you know, on the label with the name of the fragrance, you know, twenty twenty one or whatever year it's going to be in the future. I uh, I don't think that's a good move. But anyways, their fragrance called Christina it looks clean. Uh, lots of some citrus, some iris, some fruity notes, some incense, patchouli. Looks like it'd be nice. Um, a lot of these are nice. But some of them are kind of safe as well, so they're kind of they're really expensive. Some of them for what they are, but I will be getting my review up for y'all of uh, Chiron from the House of Tinzion Terenzi. That's one that actually impressed me, blew me away. And I see here the new Bond is excellent. He is no longer. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get into the politics, but that's might be something I make on my social commentary channel. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I can say or should say here, but uh, no, I'm not the biggest Bond fan in general, anyways. But uh, I will get. I'm not going to get into that. But you tempt me. You tempt me. This is a fragrance channel, but Casey says Bond is dressed in a Tom Ford for a lot of his stuff. Uh, yeah, that's what I hear. Tom Ford suits. Tom Ford everything. Tom Ford perfume. Let's see here. Bond shoes are Crockett and Jones. You must know a lot more about um, a lot more about Bond. How do I, I know very little to nothing. So you know what shoes he would have he would have worn or did wear in certain movies. Uh, I know James Bond is a big thing, but. You know, I as a kid, I like Jason Bourne more than anything. And I, you know, the fourth movie even of Jason Bourne was bad. And the fifth was really mixed, really iffy. The, you know, the first three Jason Bournes were the only decent ones. So Bond looks like the type of guy that would wear gray vetiver. Yeah, the newer James Bond guy. I don't I, I forget the, even the name of the actor. Yeah, not, you know, every, I won't even get into that. There's lots of opinions that might offend people just in general of just James Bond. <laughs> we won't, I won't get into crit critiquing actors and James Bond movies and maybe I'll make a movie critique channel. Maybe I'll want to watch that. <laughs> Anyways, um, fragrance wise, I wish that there was more fragrances that looked particularly exciting. That uh, looked particularly new. I don't know of anything else that um, is new. Do y'all do do know of anything that's on the radar that's coming out recently that looks exciting? I you know, this is kind of the end of the year. We're getting near Christmas and near the holidays. You think that there'd be some new releases. Maybe there's going to be some new ones that come out in the next week or two or three, but you think that there would be a couple, you know, I, I, with fragrances, 
in the perfume industry, I don't know what their intentions are. A lot of the times, we, it looks like we see new releases are, you know, and now, sorry about that, announcements in like February or something. And then our new fragrances we get in like May or something like that. I don't know why that is. Or like, you know, I, I don't really know. Or like late March. I don't know why this is. Uh, Sean Connery. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. You know, Sean Connery. That's the one. That's the one. Uh, Casey uh, Pierce uh, Bronson wore Dracar Noir. James Bond. <laughs> you know just so much about James Bond, and uh, I don't. Fritz the Cat says Freddie Mercury wore Monsieur de Gavinci. <laughs> A lot of y'all know all this history. I, I, you know, I, I, again, I, I'm not against you know pop, you know pop stuff or not. That's not even pop music. It's like I don't know pop culture, as they say. But I don't know. I've never really learned stuff like that that much maybe i should maybe it'd be fun <laughs> i'm over here you know i'm a lot i'm a lot more socially or culturally aware than i used to be but when i was like a kid you you i mean i amazed people i was around that i didn't know like people around here cared about like nascar and wrestling and um what else? Is, there's something else they cared about. I can't remember. Anyways, they would ask me sometimes ask me questions about that. Oh, football, of course. And sometimes I, I know little to nothing because we never talked about that in my house. I never got to watch any of it. Never got to hear hear, hear about it. And uh, I was more interested in learning like history and um, cultures and lots of other things. And I guess that kind of attitude has continued for me. I don't know. Uh Casey, I don't know what he wears, and I, I don't think about all these politicians, and I try not to think about them or pay a lot of them any attention. I, I don't, I certainly don't think about what they would, what fragrances they wear, what they drink for water, or what their favorite booze is. I don't care. Gordon Ramsay wears Aventus. Does he really? That's uh okay. Uh, I could see that perhaps. <laughs> Uh, stacks in the building. Good to see you, Stacks. Uh, Stacks wears a barbecue, barbecue sauce or barbecue smoke. Stacks review says tomorrow Sunday smoking some yardbirds. Hey, that's nice. How, how do you like them? What do, what do you do to them? Uh, I like applewood. Cherry's nice, but uh, I uh, my dad. He likes the hickory, and uh, he likes some of that kind of stuff. He likes he likes that deeper, that deeper stuff. So I don't know. For me, my 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 the rest of my family, if I have like a cookout with them or anything, they don't care for brining. But uh, you know, for pork, of course, I you know I want to be extra careful about keeping things sanitary and stuff. Uh, but even for you know, with it with a with the birds and all that. You know, if I do that, I don't even think of, or it's not about being clean with them, even though it helps with the brining. If you don't know what brining is, it's when you put uh, like a meat, like uh, and you, it's like marinating. You essentially put it in a high, high salt concentration with water and you soak it overnight. It changes the texture. And it also with pork, it can kill possibly any parasites that are in there that might be bad for you. And, uh, and it's just seems to make things more crispy when you cook it up. And to me, I, li I like I like brine stuff. I'm, the rest of my family doesn't want to go through the effort and they don't seem to care. But I like brining. And then when I cook it, I like to put like a vinegar uh, type of thing on it when it's while it's cooking to make it, you know, crispy and get that texture like I like. And um, I, I, I usually don't do too much of a rub. But in the final stages of cooking, I get saucy. I definitely sauce it up. Um, and I like the sauce cooked on and into it before. Uh, I don't like the sauce on the side. Or, I mean, sauce on the side works, but I, I want I want it sauced before. Uh, down south slang. <laughs> I guess you understand me, Stacks. 
Well, we cook and smoke and grilling it up. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if y'all pay attention. I, I don't pay attention to TikTok that much, but there's a guy who does a bunch of Southern cooking, uh, like huge batches of food that, you know, would feed like 20, 30, 40, 50 people. And, uh, and he cooks some good stuff sometimes too. And he knows how to just throw it together and make it work. And, uh, he says, that's money, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. And uh, I think so. I've seen some other people supposedly think that's funny too. You cook something good, you make it right and you taste it and you're like, that's money, dude. <laughs> I'm a no sauce type of guy. Hey, more, more power to you. Everybody's got their way of doing something and it, whether it be grilling movies or whatever. And uh, if it makes you happy, you know, there's something to be said about that. So you know, some people like to do a rub. Some people just like the smoke. Some people like the salt and pepper at the end. Or uh, some people, uh, you know, do the mop sauce like Carolina style. You mop it. You like a thin vinegar sauce uh, on it at the very end. Uh, some people like the the do the pulled pork and just at the end of it, tear it apart and put the sauce into it at the end. Uh, so everybody's got their own way of doing it. So uh, sulfate oxide in the bread. <laughs> <laughs> Fritz going crazy. Fritz going crazy in the house. Stack says stale cracker. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't think that's funny? Ah, man, I thought that was funny. I thought that was something. Uh, ben Cancio says just got Ro Roger. Uh, Roger Dove, not Roja. Uh, <laughs> some people got mad at me. Enigma Parfum Cologne for the... the was, what's that number? 182? Is that say 132? I think that's a 182. That's a good price. You got that on a tester. Was it mostly full? All full? That's a good price. Uh, it says Raz Scott says we UK uh, we UK are rocking it on. What? Oh yeah, it's late for you. Yeah, it's not late for me. It's not too late for me. That's why I try to get on here about 6 p.m. because. Maybe that works for some most people or some people. You know, I call this the Saturday Night Live of Fragcom. For some people, late, you know, night doesn't start until after 12 p.m. But if I was on here at 12 p.m., you might be waking up, Raz Scott. You might be waking up if I got, you know, 6 a.m. in the morning if I got on here, uh, you know, 12 after 12 p.m. at night. Uh, so I don't know. Let me know. I like this time. I think it works. I think it's decent. So. That's right. Yeah. Thank you for hanging out with me. It means a lot though. And I know it's late and uh, we've been on here for an hour 22. I don't know how much longer we're going to be on here, but we're just kicking it uh, a little bit. So Fritz says, I like Roja fetish. Fetish is good. There are some good ones. I have said that Roja, uh, Roger Dove is uh, too expensive uh, sometimes for what they is, but they do have some good ones for sure. And fetish is, fetish is one of them. But uh, can't find it anymore. Yeah, the availability of things is tough right now. Getting things is tough, and uh, if you want things on sale, uh, it, you know, trying to get a good price, uh, the, the deals aren't always available. It's gonna, it's a little bit harder. I'm sure y'all know. Getting what you want and trying to find that deal, a little bit tough right now. Yeah, buddy, I'm at work in the night shifting Mansara red tobacco, smelling it up. How many sprays did you put on of the Red Beast? I don't know. Interlude Man by Amwaj is the Blue Beast. Should we call Mansara Red Tobacco the Red Beast? I don't know. Anyways, that's a strong one, my friend. Uh, uh, Neo says, a random little show like this is enjoyable and calming uh, when you're just in your thoughts. Yeah, some food for thought, uh, relaxing. Uh, hopefully I'm relatable and uh, having some friendship. And this, to me, this is a, li a little part a little, a little, a little piece, a little snippet of Fragcom, and uh, just trying to find, you know, like-minded people and having some friendship and and kicking it back. That's what these these are all about. And um, if I would have known about the that I could do this, I would have done this a long uh, a long time ago and started doing this more regularly. I did lives every day trying to do fragrance reviews that way, but this is like enjoyable to be able to do this like once a week and uh, talk about the fragrances we've been wearing and the new stuff and just talk about and joke around. So um, this is, you know, I, this is a lot of fun. I'm, 
<laughs> Raz Scott says eight to 10 of the red. Oh, the red beast, eight to 10 fragrances. You're smelling it up. You're a monster. Thank, uh, thankfully, uh, you're only choking yourself out. Well, don't uh, knock yourself out on the jaw. <laughs> Fritz Decat says, I think I'm wearing Enclave, the minty and wash. Oh, yes. Minty clean and fresh. Just a couple mils of the sample. Well, are you liking it, Fritz? Are you tempted? Are you gonna go for a are you gonna go for a bottle? Uh Stax Review says, Great bro, you still alive? <laughs> hey, I'm still alive. I don't I don't think you were referring to that, but as a kid, one of my favorite little taglines, you know, some people like you know, certain movie quotes. And I guess I was nerdy and, uh, there's a movie called Ace Combat Zero. It's a, it's a, like a jet, um, you know, like semi simulation game where you fight as a jet against other jet. I, I really enjoyed the story. It was a, re some, a really good, it's actually really highly rated. I didn't know other people liked it as much as I liked it. I thought it was just something that, uh, you know, I, I was the only fan. Anyways, one of the one of the little catchphrases in that is "Yo, buddy, still alive." And I I, I used to say that sometimes, and uh, that's one of the things I joke around and I say that uh, on occasion, not very often, but just joking to a friend you haven't seen in a while, and, and you know, like "Yo, buddy, still alive." <laughs> Ronald says, "Evening, scent of the night, Aramis Tobacco Reserve." Hey, that's a good one. Confident. And uh, again, I don't know what you're supposed to be able to say these days, but that's got that confidence. Some people might say masculine vibe. Stax Review says best game ever is God of War on the PS3. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, I mean, a really good one. I don't know. I don't want to compare the best of the best video games. I, I don't even, I haven't even played a lot of them that are considered the best. I really liked Armored Core 3. Uh, Tekken 3 for me was great as a kid. Um, it has some of its problems, but I thought Dragon's Dogma was pretty good. I, I haven't played Shadow of the Colossus yet. I know that's a really highly rated one. Um, I've been trying to play uh, Beat. I, I, I think I watched my dad when I was a kid. It was like Return to Castle Wolfenstein, the second game of the series. And I think I, I I got this mod, and I think it made it a lot more difficult. It's and I, and I chose the hard setting anyways. But I looked up somebody on the internet, and they supposedly were playing it on the hardest difficulty. And sometimes I think they might have been lying. I don't know what they did, but they got hit. There were times where they got hit by something, and it only did one damage. That if I get hit sometimes by enemies, it can do as much as thirty damage per hit. And uh, so I don't know if this mod makes things a whole lot more difficult. And there's a lot more enemies. So um, if I beat that game, I did quite the challenge. So I thought the Metro series was really great. Met Metro, uh, ex uh, not Exodus. That one's good, though. The first one, um, Last Light. Really good game. It's more of like a survival shooter based in Russia. Let's see here. I didn't know about it as a kid. And, and again, I did really get into Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. If you're in two games and you like RPGs, that's a fantastic one. Uh, ha, ha, um, one just alive. Thankfully, uh, cold over here. Okay, stay warm, though. Don't get too cold. Um, Led Zepp says, I have started uh, started a collection, Heritage. Um, oh, you're collect are you collecting Guerlain's? Oh, you, those are a mix of them. Are those your favorites? I'm not sure which would your start a collection. Hit. Those are really good fragrances. I'm, I'm not sure if those are like your favorite fragrances uh, or, your, uh, or your collection of a certain style. Uh, please tell us, Led Zip. Uh Ronald says Division One is amazing. Yeah, there's. I know some people have some fond memories and love some of those and some of the Tom Clancy's, uh, th those things too. They have fond memories. Uh, and the. Uh, I don't honestly I don't even know if I played that, but anyways. Ben says Diagolev and Enigma smell similar to me. What about you? Um there's some similarities, but I don't think they're exactly the same. I I like the Enigma much better personally. I, I'd have to revisit the Diagolive um and uh to re really refresh in my memory. We the Enigma is is more boozy. I think it I think it's a little bit more ambery, isn't it? 
and they deal Diaglyph has more some more of the florals. It's more leathery, if I remember right. But I could be wrong. I I'd have to do a comparison video. It's been a little while. Uh, Stack says, although fellows, I got to roll. Uh, peace. Well, thank you for popping in, Stacks. Thanks for spending some time and having a little bit of fun kicking it and uh, spending time with friends and family. Brits the Cat says, Heritage is beautiful. Yes, it is. Heritage is great. And uh, Judd the Stud says, Stop sign holders. West. Stop sign. West. Some expensive. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Stop sign holders. West. What? Man, I, I, I don't know if I'm just out of the loop or I'm so, I'm so uncultured. Or I'm an uncultured swine. I, I I don't know what you mean, my friend. Some people have made jokes, and I don't think that, and I, you know, they didn't make sense to me, and I don't think they've ever come back. I, or at least they never commented again. And I'm like, I wish I knew. Maybe tell me. Maybe don't. Judd the Stud says, I decided to skip La Leak and get Dark Casino Elixir. Hope that one works out for you. I haven't tried the Dark Casino <laughs> Elixir. Let me know if the dark one's worth the money. Let me know if that's a good one. I have like eight or nine. Oh, you like the Duas and won't uh, front love and won't front. Uh, yeah, no, you don't have to lie. If you love the Dua, more power to you. And lots of people love are loving the duas out there, so more power to you. I, I I am tempted to get the Italian Palme, and I would like to try some more. They've uh, they've really upped their game. Again, when I was a little bit negative about it, it's when they first came out, and I mean, I, I, I my opinion what hasn't changed on what they were in the past, but now they're a lot better than they used to be. Ronald says I don't like the new Guerlain bottles for Heritage. Uh, they feel too light. Ah, uh, so you like to, you like to have the heavy like the heavy glass. It feels you know the heavier you know feels like quality. That do, that sometimes makes sense. And in the past, it you know that did make sense is that something was higher quality back in the day because you know it was thicker and it had more work to put into it to make it, and usually was more durable if it was heavier. Uh, so especially in the past, but these days, I'm not trying to disagree. I'm just going off on a tangent. You know, you know, yeah. I guess you can't do that as much because we got crazy technology, te technological stuff like carbon fiber. Anyways, that had not much to do with what you said, but <laughs> yeah, it's um. Who knows? Maybe in the future we won't put fragrances in glass bottles. Maybe we'll be putting fragrances in carbon fiber. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Now, I know what you're talking about. When I first got a Montal bottle, those things are made out of aluminum cans. They're essentially like a soda can. If you, I don't know how many of y'all have, have had a Montal or picked up a bottle, but it was surprisingly light. And, and also, um, to make the bottles look impressive, they, um, <laughs> they make them bigger than they need to be. Even a full-size bottle that's completely full those Montal bottles are only like half full. And when you open it, even it was even if it was a brand new sealed package and a fragrance, I thought I got cheated before because it's so extremely light in, a, in a, an aluminum can, like a soda can. And then the fragrance is, you know, th you know, sometimes we think 3.4 mils or 100 mil. I mean, 3.4 ounces or 100 mils is a lot of, I mean, that's a lot for fragrance when you're spraying little mist of highly you know, highly concentrated smelling fragrance. But I mean, you drink like a, a hundred, like, you know, you drink like 20 ounces of water all the time and you'd be surprised at, you know, 3.4 fluid ounces, how small that is in a container. Anyways, that was my point. So, um, let's see. I can't wait to try some Dua. They, they, I mean, they are worth trying. Get some samples and see which ones work for you. And uh, they do have good sales, so do keep an eye open for the sales. I don't. I I think y'all said that there was one tonight, but they they come out sometimes. I'm sure there's going to be one that pops open for Black Friday or somewhere in, in the holidays. I'm sure there'll be a Christmas one. There seems to always be one somewhere. You know, I have four th the five lush fragrances. Uh, I just realized I never wear them. Impulsive love at first sniff by. If you don't love them and if you don't want to wear them, you know what I'm saying over here. 
sell them and then buy something you actually like. But uh, I do want to try Dirty. I, I forget if that's made by Lush or Gorilla, if they're the same. I don't know. But that's supposedly like a mint fragrance. So Judd the Stud, I need to go back to your comment. You said, I boycotted them for like six years, and then I tried them again last year. Something just clicked. Well, I'm happy that they worked for you. More power to you, my friend. Fritz the Cat. Uh, read that. Uh, Neo, I love Poseidon um, casting. I liked Italian Palme. If you like Gourmands, try the Italian Palme. Uh, they have 3%. Three? Or is it 30? I'm not sure if you meant to say 30. I know they have cells that are bigger. Okay, yeah, like bigger than bigger than three. Uh, Fritz the Cat says, easier to buy a 30 mil of the real stuff. Yeah, Dua, again, not trying to take away from Dua. It really, if you're looking, if it's a fusion fragrance where they changed it up, that makes it kind of fun and different. But if it's a clone of a fragrance that's $150 or $200, for what you're paying for 30 mils for $75, even if it's on sale, even if you get 30 mils for, let's say, 50 that's kind of tough if it's only a clone of a, only a fragrance that's 150, 200, maybe even 250. Now, if it's a duo interpretation of a fragrance that's $250 plus, that might start making more economic sense. Might, possibly, depending on the quality and what you like and all that stuff. Don't sit for Dua. <laughs> hey, he's excited about the Dua. Raz Scott says, yeah, I actually got 120 mil uh, in a 100 mil Montal bottle once. I poured it out and measured it out. And you, and it, and it was, and you measured it. <laughs> if, I, if you spilled any of that stuff, man, you got that stuff everywhere. Montal strong. Red, Red Oud's good too. It's. But you got that Montal everywhere. You, I bet you, I bet your house was smelling it up. Eric says dirty is decent. Okay, so I shouldn't be too excited about it. I still want to try it. I don't know why, but I want to. Judd says, "Ha ha, man! I know I tried, uh, not, but you know." <laughs> hey, I hear you. Uh, Fritz uh, the cat says, "I still want to try Vintage Man Dua." But I might break down and uh, break down and pop the cherry on by, by man. Oh yeah, you know that's the thing. You know, saving up that money to getting, you know, maybe getting something you really want or something extra or something big and expensive. I hear you. Okay, <laughs> this has been a pretty good chat. People, people going off and. Uh, Raz Scott says I poured it into a glass. You measured it up. 120 mils. Yeah, they, you know, Montal, they, you know, they aren't cheating you, but it, you might think that you're getting cheated because those bottles are so darn light. It, um, it's crazy. Ben says, I heard there was a new Dior Homme Parfum. Uh, I, do you think it's, is it a flanker? Because again, Dior's done, done us kind of dirty. You know, they kind of watered things down and weakened their versions. And uh, really messed up that Dior Ohm line. So I don't know. I don't know if I'd mess with it. No, I always like something with coffee or tobacco. So if they give us like a Dior Ohm parfum, like a, a, you know, a noir version, and they were throwing coffee in it, I mean, I'd be tempted, but I don't know if I'm going to mess with them anymore. Dior, I mean, I, again, I wasn't really the biggest fan of Dior in particular. Their Dior line, um, their Cure Canage was darn good, and the Eau Noir. And the Eau Noir is discontinued. And again, I don't want to bump up the prices, and it's discontinued, and people are already ga going gaga for stuff like that. But those were – and, and uh, what was that one called, like Mitza? Um, So that was some of their best. I think they discontinued the Mitza as well. Anyways uh, – so for me, Dior's like discontinued almost anything that's good. They've been playing the flanker game with Sauvage, and then they really messed up the ohm line. So to me, Dior's in the gutter. Dior is in the gutter, guys. And uh, I don't want to beat up on companies, and I, you know, but maybe I should. Maybe y'all would like it if I was like rage baiting and like Dior's trash. I hate Dior. No, I'm not. I'm not that kind of guy. But 
I mean, I mean, Dior is. I mean, some people are still out there. Everything that Dior releases, that uh, what 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 was that one called? Like Rock Eden, and people are like blind buying this stuff. I don't know. It's I'm sure it's going to be wearable and fairly enjoyable. Most of the Dior's are, but you know, it's like kind of like Creed. It's like Dior needs to be get. They need they, they need a little punch of uh, they need a little punch of reality. <laughs> Oh Noir is basically M. Wange Sunshine Man, but green. I'd have to test that, but I'm not sure. I don't remember that. You could be right, Judd. I just I have I need to have, I'd have to revisit Sunshine Man and put them side by side. Uh, the third version of Dior Homme Parfum probably even weaker. Yeah, I, I I'm not optimistic, and I'm not going to be blind buying that. I'm with you, Rescott. I'm not blind buying that stuff. New Dior. Oh, yeah, I read that. Uh, GM says, did we already talk about Maison Fresh's Kurt uh, Jan, Kurt John being the head of Dior? I mean, supposedly he does his best work for other companies. So Maison Fresh's Kurt John has done great work for Ellie Saab. He did that line with the numbers, like the, the, the ombre and the the numbers and there was like a rose and a oud and some of these that were really good and he's done he's worked for some other companies and made some pretty darn good stuff so maybe he'll be able to fix up dior but their pricing and all this stuff i don't know but uh maybe their fragrances are going to improve i don't know but dior needs a new designer line it's creative it works it makes sense with the brand they need a whole new designer line like a new fragrance not Sauvage, not Flankers. Um, I, again, their DNA works, but again, uh, with their their private, uh, their exclusive line, but I've never been terribly crazy about that. I'll hit it clean, almost soapy DNA. Uh, but um, I think that it would be fun if they would, I, I guess you could keep that DNA, but again, be more bold on some of these notes and maybe give us some exclusive versions for certain regions, like the Middle Eastern with some, you know, unique ouds and some stuff. And of course you got to do that, but do something different, you know, maybe make some more extreme fragrances on their private line. And uh, with the Dior Ohm line, I don't know how you're going to fix that. I don't think it's fixable. I don't know. I don't really think it is unless even if they went back to the formulations at the same price and they brought back those formulations that they used to have, I don't think I don't know if it's fixable. I, 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 at least in my mind, I don't know what the public thinks, and I don't know whatever. But the maybe the public doesn't even care and doesn't even think about the reformulations and all that mess that went on with that that uh, Dior own line. But it's a it's a mess. See here, tobacco colors, good stuff, but orig, uh, but unoriginal. I can't uh, believe they discontinued. Oh, they discontinued Fiv Delicious. That was like their favorite. That was like everybody's favorite. That's like Maison Margiela discontinuing like by the fireplace. That and 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 I think by I, I I don't know which one's more popular, Jazz Club or by the fireplace. Either one. And that's like them discontinuing like the the fragrance that everybody likes. <laughs> and again, sometimes we in the Fragcom think that we're the majority, or you hear these opinions like. Listen, it, like with with Ultra Mall by Jean Paul Gaultier, it was a. It, I'm making a point. It was possibly a similar thing, where you know it's an online exclusive and possibly is on its way to being discontinued. It's because everybody in the Fragcom buys it, but again, we're a very small percentage of people who are actually buying things at malls and Dillard's and Macy's and airports and everything else. So. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe people outside of the fragrance community didn't buy Fiv Delicious. Maybe they thought it was too expensive and they didn't want to water it down, so they just canned it. Or just, I don't know. But that's... Uh, <laughs> I, I I was wondering if that had happened, but I wasn't 100% sure. I'll have to look into that. But I haven't seen it available. I haven't seen people buying it. And Fiv Delicious used to be a big deal and still... It kind of is. It used to be like the gourmand for a lot of people. Wearable, it got a lot of people into the gourmand game. So, um, if you want, if you want to smell sweet and delectable, so 
Have you tried Sauvage Elixir? And if so, what do you think? I, I have Navajo. Um, and Judd the Stud says, I am right. I think you are. <laughs> uh, see, I, I've reviewed it. Yes. I invite you to watch my review. And I know that's, I don't know, kind of a cheap thing to say. But hey, I, I, I reviewed it for you. So why don't you watch it? Anyways, uh, I don't want to spoil my whole review. But it's it's good. It's decent. But I uh, wasn't particularly blown away. Performance is pretty decent, though. So, But watch the review. That's what I'll, uh, I, I don't want to say much more. Judd the Stud says, Maison means the house in French, just for your information. It's not a name. Uh, well, I always said it like it's the house, like Parfums de Nicolai. It's like, or Nicolai Parfumé. I don't know. It's to me like some of these brands, it seems like that's a part of their name. And I don't really know sometimes if it is, but I include it like, am I supposed to just say Nikolai or am I just supposed to say like Margella? I don't know. Let's see here. I just popped the cherry on by man. <laughs> I hope that you love it. Uh, Neo says, I just want the original Ohm to come back uh, in the U.S. because I never got it. I don't know if that's going to happen, Neo. It's already expensive. Uh, it's, pr it's probably not going to get cheaper. It's probably going to get more expensive. And if you're just, if you've never looked or paid attention, there's actually uh, versions of Dior Ohm Intense and Parfum. Uh, mo mo what most people know of with Dior Ohm is actually like the second, and some people might argue the second formulation. There's actually were silver sprayers that used to be heavier on the Iris. So the whole line has already been reformulated before. So I don't even hardly see those on eBay. And even to get a regular version like Black Sprayer, they're asking lots of money. And uh, you better be prepared to spend, I don't know, maybe three, four, five hundred dollars plus, especially if you want like a silver sprayer Dior own parfum. <laughs> it's painful. It's uh, it's not going to be pretty. And uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why there's some of these, real. you know, some people want to everybody to talk about vintage and buy vintage, but then these things just get harder to get and even more expensive. And I know that some of them are historical and some of them were beautiful. And I know of stuff that I think is great that's discontinued. And I just try not to talk about or ever mention it again, because it's just going to add to the potential problem. Do y'all know how much, the like a bottle of like a Ventus ZZ01 or whatever those first batches cost these days. <laughs> you're going to pay like sometimes, I mean, you could pay, you're going to pay at least a thousand. You might pay as much as like two grand for an event of like a Ventus <laughs> ZZ01 batch. <laughs> oh, and um, I, I don't recommend it for the value for the money it's good but it's not that good uh no dude like uh his name oh his name okay sorry no offense to the guy no no offense it's like chanel discontinuing number five yeah that's like their best fragrance that's like they, they, their iconic fragrance that's like creed discontinuing aventus it's like you might as well shut down your business and start a new company <laughs> it's like what do you or Carl Mondel. Uh, I yeah, you you don't mess with Carl Mondel. Uh Judd the Stud says Chanel Boise de I never know how to say that too. E Idis? Idis? E Idles <laughs> is awesome. I might wear it tomorrow now. Well wear it up. Wear it up, Judd. Uh Neo says that's sad. Uh that companies are constantly did well, it the designer game moves fast. I've told people before, if you're in love with a designer fragrance and you want to wear that for the rest of your life and you can't live without it, and maybe you are a signature scent person. I'm not. I've been very, you know, but more power to you if you are a signature scent person. Some fragrances are popular and some fragrances somehow get the luck of the draw, the lottery ticket. And some designer fragrances might be around for 20 years. Some might be around for 10. Black opium. That's more of a ladies' fragrance. I know most of you got guys are gents, but that fragrance is probably it's been around for a while. It might be a 10, 15, it might be a 20-year designer fragrance. 
but some are gone in a year and a half, especially if it's a flanker. You can almost guarantee that if it's a flanker, it's probably going to be gone in a year and a half or two. So if you can't live without it, if it's a designer fragrance that you like, like a lot of people who cried about like Prada, uh, Prada uh, Extreme or the, uh, I think it was the 2016 version of Invictus the, uh, Aqua and some of that stuff. If you like it uh, and you fall in love with it, it's like they might reformulate something or they might just completely change it. So it's sometimes hard to know what's going to be gone and what's not. We're all on a budget. And again, I don't do backup bottles or anything like that. But if you're a signature scent person or if you get really attached, I mean, you might want to. You might. I mean, that might be some that might be a real something you really want to consider. Uh, anyways, let's get back to the comments. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. I, I do suspect that it's money wise. You know, Iris is getting more and more expensive. I don't know if it's because of the availability of the Iris that uh, that Dior did it, but they already reformulated and weakened that aspect of the fragrance. I don't know if it was the Iris or something else, but yeah, Dior thought that they had to do it uh, for money or some other reason, or maybe. You know, it was really tough to get, you know, get the ingredients. I don't know. Raz Scott says one liter decanter flacon of ZZO1 uh, would go for like 10K. Uh, oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> I, you should have put, we should have put, uh, invested in that. And uh, some of us could have a, a retirement. <laughs> If you want to put your money on that when those were available, those, if y'all don't know, flacons are like big, a flacon is like a big container and you used to be able to, I don't, I don't, I think Creed might still have some available, but used to be able to buy like 600 mils of Aventus and these big bottles and people would decant them out. And that's why you see this like secondary people making like a living off of decanting Creed's. It, and then Creed got mad about it as if they didn't know, but I guess they got mad about it enough that they, that was like a year ago, but I won't say more about that, but you know, we always somehow get in the Creed, Creed talk. Anyways, if you would have bought up those things, ZZO one batches of Creed Aventus, yeah, you'd be swimming in money if you would have invested in those. You would have made like, how much profit is that? It's like, I don't even want to do the math. <laughs> I don't know, like 20 times your investment. <laughs> I know there's stuff out there that's even more profitable, but that's pretty crazy that you could like 20 times your money. Every dollar becomes 20 bucks. Pretty good. Anyways, um, I think we've joked enough about, I think, I think we might've burnt ourselves out. Anything else y'all want to joke about anything else before we wrap up? We've been on here for almost two hours, kicking it, spending some time with yours truly. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your love and your friendship and uh, the little bit of the little slice, a little part of the fragrance community pie over here. I know that I'm not the biggest fragrance reviewer. That's what that's clearly not what this is all about. It's a, clearly about friendship and uh and we have fun and i know that everybody doesn't agree with me or see my point of view or some people are trying again more power to the people who are political i'm not trying to take shots at anybody but if you're still here for future reference i don't try to make this fragrance channel political i get into the fragrance hobby to avoid politics and uh, some people on instagram have unfollowed me uh in general because i don't want to be a part of here politics of pushed into fragrance. If you want to talk about politics, you get, you argue with people on Facebook or you get into a comment section on some news website or something. I, I, I don't like to see politics intermingled with fragrance and I try to avoid it. I see politics from all kinds of different angles from many different sides and people. And I hear about it all the time. I try to not talk about it as much anymore, but you know, in the past, I used to research and dive into it and pay attention to a lot of it. So, you know, I, I 
I'm not trying to discourage people, but just just please don't do that. Um, uh, Netherlands, Netherlands, any good? Uh, is that a fragrance, Ben? I'm not familiar with that. Uh, Raz Scott says, I had one liter of Aventus, but it's a newer batch, so it's only worth a grant. <laughs> yeah, it's only worth a grant. It's only worth a grant. Prince the Cat says, I'm avoiding Creed like the plague, like the rabbit hole. Don't want to go down. Uh, you don't want to go down that slippery uh, slippery rabbit hole. Alice in Wonderland, and uh, you won't come back. Uh, Neo says, if you want to get serious about collecting anything, you certainly got to be serious about your money. Uh, absolutely. People tax the hell out of people wanting to collect things because supply and demand. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, supply and demand, everything, yeah. And again, it's it, and and art knows no bounds. You know, I know I don't think any of y'all are artists or painters. You know, I'm not. I guess I'm not sophisticated enough. But you know, I can understand somebody who would pay uh, maybe a grand or two if you really like to painting that somebody spent a month to paint. You know, but you know, some of these famous paintings can be worth like fifty million dollars. Um, yeah, so art has no limits. Some people pay exorbitant amount of monies for a lot of things. And, um, I, to me, I don't know. There's historical paintings. So I understand some of that's important, but there's some things out there that are really, to me, you know, <laughs> that painting, to me, I, it could be worth a hundred bucks for all I care, but it's worth 50 million. 50 million buckaroos, smuckaroos. You want to buy it? I mean, I can't, I, even if I wanted to. No. Keep us posted on the soap brand. I will. And thank you, Fritz the Cat, for reminding me. I'm still working on it. That's a passion of mine. And uh, we're going to do that and eventually get to a point of a fragrance company. And thank you for the love. And don't feel discouraged, Neo. Please, if you're getting into fragrance, if you're newer, there's a lot to explore. Don't get, you know, have fun with it. There's so many brands. There's so many companies. There's so much good stuff out there. Don't have the feel that you've missed out on things in the past, just like with anything in life. There's so much new stuff in the future You uh, to create, to smell, to enjoy. There's new brands and new fragrances and so much beautiful stuff out there. Uh, you know, some things come and go. Some people are going to talk about certain things that are discontinued or vintage or extremely hard to get. And uh, you might never find them or not want to pay the money for them. And there's a few fragrances like that. Like, uh, I want Black Excess Aphrodisiac from Paco Rabanne. But I'm not willing to, I can't find a bottle if, that anybody has. And if somebody was to have that fragrance, they probably would want two to $300 plus for it. And I don't even, and like one time I wanted a vintage bottle of Aqua de Gio, for example. And I paid a guy. It was sealed in the box. It looked weathered. He told me it was stored indoors. I could have returned it on him, but I opened the package. It was sealed. It was an original real bottle of Aqua de Gio, and it was, was a vintage, but it had gone bad. I don't know if he stored it indoors. I don't know what the temperatures were inside this people's house. I don't even know what the person did. I don't know if they put it in their darn garage. But the thing looked more weathered than it should, but I still opened it. And, uh, and it had gone bad. And, you know, I, I still wish that I had a vintage ball of Aqua de Gio that wasn't bad. But I'm not going to go out there and pay $100, $150 and risk my money on another experience where I just get burned. And burned bad. And uh, $100 is not, is, that's not pocket change for me. For some people, $100 is pocket change. They can throw that away. And uh, that's not going to hurt them. You know, I share some expensive fragrances again, but a lot of the times I'm re I'm buying or getting fragrances and I'm reviewing them and then I'm selling them so I can afford the next thing. Some people in the for this fragcom and they're the uh, you know reviewers and such and they you see behind them a hundred fragrances. I don't know what kind of jobs they have. I don't know how much they're making off of YouTube, but uh, supposedly I get thirty dollars a month on YouTube. I don't even get that. So uh, I don't know, but I do appreciate the little bit of donations. That's not what I'm asking about. I'm just saying that uh, be happy with the journey. No matter what budget you have, have fun. And that's what it's all about. Uh, let's see. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox. I was having some fun, though. 
keep us uh, in Overture Man by Enwaj any good? I'd have to revisit it. A lot of Enwajes are really good. Some of them are risky. Some of them are daring for some people, meaning they're kind of challenging to wear. Uh, there's a lot of incense to them. So I don't know how familiar you are with Enwaj. Um, if you like more mass appeal or easier to wear fragrances, Reflection Man is always the one to go for. If you like dry, uh, woody vibes, like maybe you're a little bit more of a fougere head, Bracken Man is the one to go for, and there is Beach Hut Man as well. Um, I like Jubilation 25. Some people find it ooty, but to me, not terribly ooty, but there is lots of incense. And uh, for me, Jubilation 25 is the best to come out of the house of Amboise. To me, there's no doubt about that, uh, but uh, certainly and Waj is a house to explore. Go to a boutique if you can and smell it up. Uh, Fritz the Cat says, Overture Man is a sweet animalic. Very much um, hairy chest juice. <laughs> Epic Man is too. Uh, you know, really confident. That's for sure. Uh, again, thank you, Raz, uh, for the, I think that would be um, a, a dollar. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it's a U.S. dollar. Uh, Fritz the Cat says, I sprayed Overture on the bill of my cap uh, three months ago. I can still smell it. And wash can be very powerful stuff. Callie's Groom Room, good to see you. How's it going, my friend? Time to musk up says, hey, Ben, nice stream. Thank you. And uh, we have passed over the two-hour mark. So I do appreciate you <laughs> and everybody who is here today. Time to musk up. What up, uh, Fritz the Cat? Sup, Rudy? Time to musk up. Vintage citrus fragrances are really a big risk. Yes. Uh, if you don't know, citrus and florals are very volatile, meaning they're unstable, and uh, they will post and they are the most likely or are going to go bad before anything else in a fragrance. So if you buy a vintage fragrance um, and it's a fragrance that's a citrus or has lots of florals, it's very likely to either those notes have disappeared, poof, they're gone, or those notes and those fragrances are very likely to become bad and become dark or sour or, you know, animal, really weird. And, you know, it's um, sometimes can ruin the fragrance. Sometimes it can be manageable, you know, fragrances that are all fragrances are aging and changing. And some of it depends on if it's natural. So if you have, again, some people really beat up on synthetics. I'll get off this soapbox and try to catch up with these comments and round up this live tonight. But as y'all know, some people beat up on synthetics. And I do agree with some of the best perfumers in the world. And I've, I've listened and what they've said. It's good to have the feel and the quality and some of the, the aspects of the and the fullness, the depth that naturals can give you. But uh, some of the best perfumes have some 30 percent of naturals and sometimes less of the amount of the fragrance and then 70 percent or sometimes more are synthetics and there's a lot of different synthetics that have tons of unique complexities and you can really create what you want if you're a perfumer with the synthetics and the synthetics are a lot more stable they're gonna you know the fragrance is gonna last a lot longer with the synthetics it's uh it's how it's how it works it's how the world works I'm not. Uh, I'm not a chemistry major. I could explain more, but I'm not. A, I'm not uh, too deep into the chemistry. Uh, Fritz the cat says, "Sup, Rudy? Everybody's greeting each other." I read that epic man smells like you got stuck in a chimney. Can't stand it. Time to musk up. You must not like the smoky fragrances too much. It does have some of that, perhaps. But you know, I've smelled some fragrances that are a lot more smoky. Believe it or not. So uh, I feel you though. It can be smoky for some. Callie's Group Room says, Musk up. I'm doing good, buddy. Yeah, everybody's doing good in here. Nether, ne uh, Neanderthal is a fragrance that looks like a rock face. Yeah, it's supposed to look natural. It's supposed to look like a stone. Um, yeah, I haven't tried those yet, though. Fritz the Cat says, yes. But the sour citrus usually burns off in 20, 30 minutes. Live in the mid, and the mid's okay. It's all right. Yeah, so, yeah, some people, you know, you might have some of the volatile, yeah, certain aspects of the fragrance like the top go bad but then some people will still enjoy the dry down and are willing to uh tolerate or possibly suffer if they don't really don't like it for the dry down 
And um, I don't know. I'm so picky, and I have so many other good fragrances. Um, I'm not really, I'm not really w- willing to suffer through a bad uh, opening anymore. So, uh, see for sure, agree. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I gotta say good night, guys. I've been on here for a while, but I, I really appreciate all of y'all hanging out. Anything else y'all want to say? Any goodbyes uh, to, to to me or to everybody? And again, we had a good turnout, some good friendship, and uh, it was a it was a good time. Fritz to Cat says, "Yeah, my YSL poor ohm smells funky in the opening, uh, but settles really nice. But I think it's supposed to smell that way." Um, I have to, I'd have to give that one a chance and revisit. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't remember that off the top of my head. Time to musk up says going to watch the Fury uh, Wilder fight uh, soon. Gypsy King <laughs> will win for the win. Well, um, have fun and uh, take it easy. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, Neo says, I'm so glad I found your channel. Well, thank you. Welcome to the Centaur Fragrance family. Uh, my little motto is wear what you love. I try to help people find what they enjoy explore everything, explore all the fragrances and find what they actually like. And, uh, I, I think I'm at 3000 subs or something. I'm, you know, still pretty darn small and I've been going strong for three years or so. And, uh, I appreciate all the friends. Some people come, some people go. Uh, I'm, you know, I try to be friends with everybody in the frag com, but you know, that always doesn't work, but Hey, you do what you can. Haven't, uh, there been like three already Rudy. The fights, uh, time to musk up says twice. First time was a tie. <laughs> well, they're going at it again. This is the tiebreaker. Anyways, have a good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. And again, thanks you for all the love and the support and the friendship. As you all know, I upload Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So please come back. I usually upload around um, 3 to 4 or so p.m. U.S. Central time. Uh, so I'll try to put them out. Let me know if you want me to schedule them out. I am going to try to do more community posts as well. Please check out my community post where I shout out a bunch of people in the fragrance community and try to build up and support and encourage everybody as much as I can. I definitely, um, I'm on the side of trying to build up the fragrance community, not trying to be just an influencer or a salesman or whatever the heck, uh, some of these people do. But, um, I, you know, we all have different opinions and there's some people who are starting to do things in the FragCom. I just, you know, I can't rock with some, some of them. So, uh, adios amigos. Yes. Adios, my friends. Have a good one. Have a good night. Live well, smell amazing. Uh, take, take time to cook up something good, spend time with friends and family and smell it up and, uh, in a good way. And, uh, I'll see you soon, everybody. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. And uh, again, join my Instagram too, Centaur Fragrance. Uh, having a good time over there. Unique content, different content than here. So you'll have a whole another side to see and some more reviews and all that good stuff. So um, see you soon, everybody. Good night. Peace and bye.